So welcome back, Drifters. So today, I was sitting down, I was going through my comments on these fitness videos I've been getting, and normally I do car stuff, but for whatever reason, the fitness stuff has been doing really well, and somebody was commenting about uh, doing a DIY dumbbell. And I was like, that's a good idea, but I had to do a lot of research as to how I was gonna make a dumbbell. Well, I came up with a few solutions, and I think it's gonna work out pretty well, but we're gonna have to test a few things. The first idea I had came from Amazon. So as I was going through Amazon, I was looking at different containers that had different shapes and things that we might be able to use, and I found that this thing right here had a good shape. It looks just like a dumbbell, and I was thinking, well, let's just fill it up with concrete and be done with it. But there's no way to really tell the amount of weight. So I ordered it just to see, and well, it's, it's here. But the problem is that this piece here, <laughs> The handle is not very good for gripping. It, it hits your wrist right in this spot here, and I just wasn't happy with it. And I wasn't gonna make this and then try to promote it like it was good, because it's really not that great. But the good thing that it is, does have is that this shape here is gonna make the perfect mold for a dumbbell. So what I'm gonna end up doing is cutting off these handles, and then depending on the amount of weight I want, I just replicate this, duct tape it together, and then this will be our mold for the weights. But then it came to, well, how are we gonna make the handle? Well, I came up with a solution for that. But to do that, we're gonna have to go to the garage. So let's go take a look. Okay, so what I came up with is very simple. We're gonna go back to using these black iron pipes. I'm kinda cheap and I just got a half inch. I kinda wish I got a little bit thicker, but you know, it'll work. And then I'm using this T-coupler here. It's just a half inch, so it's gonna screw in here. And this is gonna help anchor this into the concrete. So it's gonna look something like this. And you'll see inside the circle, there'll be a way to tr put some stuff through there. The concrete's gonna get in there. But also, I was reading your comments, I get it. People were very upset that I didn't add rebar before. So I got some rebar, and this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna run rebar into this, and I'm gonna basically bend it into a weird shape so that way it's a nice spiral, but it's still connected to this and running through the concrete. It's not the only thing we're gonna do to strengthen it, but that's what we're gonna do for right now. I'm just gonna do that. And then we're gonna go here. Oh yeah, there we go, look at it. Look at it, Ben. Hey, there we go. Oh yeah. We're gonna bend this the other way. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man, I'm moving my entire workbench. Woo! That's a wonky S, but we're getting there. Oh yeah. Now that should be about an S. Ah. Beautiful. Ah, whew. All right. I think that will be good enough. That looks kind of like an S if you ask me. It's not perfect, but I think now we should be able to fit this inside here. If not, we'll have to do a little bit more adjusting, but it's pretty much where we want it. So I'm gonna do some adjustments, get this thing nice and tight, and then I'm gonna cut off this end so that way we can use this to fit in there. And then the excess, I'm gonna cut into little pieces just using a cutoff wheel. You can probably do the same thing with the Dremel, and then I'm just gonna use those and sprinkle it in with it, so a little bit extra support and whatnot. Make the concrete just a little bit stronger, because, you know, last thing I wanna do is upset the uh, YouTube comment sections. <laughs> you know how it goes. So I'm just gonna use a cutoff wheel. You can use a Dremel, anything like that. It's pretty simple. I'm gonna put it up here, cut it away, and then hopefully that'll be one done, and then I just need to do seven more. So, should be fun. Something. This is sad. There we go. So we got it out of there. That's pretty much what it should look like. So I think we're pretty good to go on this one. Now just to make about seven more. Yeehaw, baby. Okay, so after doing about seven of these things, I've got a whole bunch of them done. Uh, one thing I discovered that's gonna be really helpful to you, if you look at the rebar, you can see that there's a bar line and then these little like striations on the side. This bar you want facing straight up because if it's facing straight up, it makes it so when you turn, it bends easier. Because if you try bending against that bar in the rebar, it makes it a lot harder to do. So I have that sitting up when I do it, but also all I do is I figure out about how much of the bar I need and I start at one end and then work to the other end. Uh, and that thing just seemed to work a lot better than the way that I was originally doing it. So what I like doing here is putting this really close to the edge. So when I go to bend, it's really close and I just kind of increase the radius as we go. But that's pretty much how I figure that out. And then this will curve in because this is going to shrink as we curve it. This is a workout all on its own, I tell you that much. 
Well, the uh, storm started coming down real bad. The power almost got knocked out, but I think this should be more than enough rebar to get this job done. I just chopped off the rest of them, so they're good to go. I gotta make the molds, but we'll see if we can get it done with this storm. It's looking pretty rough. Let me show you. Yeah, it's looking pretty bad. I even got a warning. Shit, look at that. We got a tornado warning. That's not great. Look at those clouds. This is looking like it's gonna be a rough one. Woo wee! Well, I better lock up the garage before this thing gets too far because this could be really bad. But hey, at least we got these done, so that's a win if you ask me. Well, I'm gonna finish this up later. Well, the good news is we survived the storm and my vegetables are very happy, but today what I'm doing is I'm working on cutting this thing up so we can continue working on these dumbbells. So even though I'm gonna be chopping up this jug here that looks like a dumbbell, you could just as easily use a piece of Tupperware. The mold isn't as important as just getting the handles correct, so I'm just using this because I think the shape will look cool, it'll look like a dumbbell, and by the time we're done with it, you might not even be able to tell the difference. What's up, dude? So all I'm using to chop this thing up is a razor blade and a pair of scissors. So I'm just gonna go to town here and then we'll get ready to pour some concrete. Shit, I cut that one a little deep. Well, there's one half of it. There we go, so that's gone. Now I just gotta cut this top half off. All right, there we go. Now if you're gonna do this with a razor blade, be very careful, cause it's real easy to chop up your finger. What's up buddy? Watch out, I'm playing, I'm working with scissors. He just loves helping me out. Uh, he's more of a camera hog than I am. All right, there we go, that should be good. So now all we gotta do is use a little bit of duct tape. All I'm doing here is I'm taking these two pieces, putting them together as best I can, and then we're just gonna kinda do it one little square at a time. I mean, we're literally just duct taping this thing together. I don't think it needs too much explanation here. All right, that should be good. As you can see, we have a nice big old bowl here. So now it's uh, pretty good. I think all we need to do now is we're gonna end up filling this thing up with concrete and then we're gonna put our dumbbell handle in there and then I'm gonna secure it in place again using duct tape of all things. So it may be kind of crude, but it's gonna work. This time I upgraded my concrete a little bit. Still the quick creep, but this time it's the high strength stuff. I don't know if it's necessary, but it wasn't much more expensive and it's 80 pounds of it. Oh boy, the glass. Oh, work with me. Work with me. That's probably more than enough. So I used way too much water and ended up with this nightmarish like clam chowder. I mean, it, it was just way too much. So I ended up having to add a little bit more concrete to kind of thin it out. But even then it was still just terrible. And for some reason, my glasses kept trying to fall off. That's why I kept grabbing my face. But the good news is, is that luckily with concrete, it'll eventually dry out anyway. It just meant that this job was going to take me a lot longer than what I planned, especially with my drill just kind of falling apart. So I may have gotten a little bit carried away with the water situation. So now this thing's kind of soaking. So I'm going to let it cure up a little bit so that way it gets rid of some of the water and then we'll go ahead and scoop the things in there, so just FYI. Also, I had to put one of these on because my glasses kept wanting to fall off. That's like the main reason I wear these things, because it keeps my glasses. I mean, I can look straight down and they stay on my head, so. That's so annoying. If you have glasses, you know what I'm talking about. You start sweating and they just fall right off your face. So, anyway, I'll be back in about five. Okay, so now all I'm gonna do is just take my WD-40 and spray all up inside here, just make sure I get it nice and lubed up because I don't want this stuff sticking when it comes time to take it out. Even though I most likely will, we're gonna just do what we can to try to prevent that from happening. So I'm just gonna spray this real good. They're both lubed up real good. Now we'll just fill it up with some concrete and then we'll move on to the next step. So now as I'm filling these, I don't want to fill them all the way because I need room for expansion. Because when I go to put those dumbbell arms in there, it's going to fill up a little bit higher. So we're going to leave a little bit of space before we put those in there. So now we got that and what we're going to do is we're going to take these. Tony, chill. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this duct tape and we're just going to basically create a brace so when we put this in there, it just kind of helps support it in the center. So that's what I'm going to work on doing right now.
So now I'm just gonna take these, slide them through, and then put the last strip on there. There we go. So now we're just gonna pour a little bit more concrete just to make sure it's full. So looking back at this, I don't know why I didn't just fill these things up before putting the tape on, but you know, hindsight being 2020 and all, things are always better when you see it the second time. Oh man, I just realized I forgot to put the rebar in there. Oops, I'm gonna just slap some rebar in where I can. Yeah, don't worry, I came up with a much better solution than duct tape, just stick with me. Okay, so I got these things about as good as they're gonna get for now, so now we just have to wait for them to harden up. And then we're gonna do the same thing, flip them over and do those sides. But that's gonna have to be a different day because we still gotta wait for these things to cure. So that's what we're gonna do and I'll see you now. So these things are looking really good. I think that they're coming along really well. They're nice and solid. And now what we have to do is take them out of the molds and get them ready to fill the other way. I mean, these things are solid. They are in there. So now all we gotta do is get them out of these molds, which shouldn't be too bad. There you go, you can chill there, good boy. Okay, so for removing these, I'm just gonna try to basically squeeze it out from the bottom. It should pop right out if we're lucky. I'm gonna hit this thing up with a rubber mallet a little bit just to kind of break it free, hopefully. So I think in order to make this work, I'm gonna have to take this thing apart, slide it off, and then tape it back together because it is not wanting to come out. Oh yeah, it's coming now. Here we go. All right, there we go. Got one part off. Now to do the bottom part, which I have a feeling this is gonna be a little bit more tricky. Try hitting it a little bit. That doesn't look like it did a thing. Hmm. All right. I'm gonna try just getting my pliers in on these grooves and seeing if I can push up on it. Just enough to where I get my hands on it. Okay, that seems to be working. This is a pain in the ass. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere. Ah, oh, there we go. More, come on. So close. Come on. Ah, there we go, okay. Whew, all right. So that's uh, one side of it done. So now, I just gotta reassemble those bowls. But you might be asking yourself, how are you going to balance this and be able to put this on the bottom? Well, let me show you. And this is how we're going to get it done. So this time what I'm doing differently is I filled these things all the way up and I'm going to put the little rebar chunks in now before we put those in. I'm just going to evenly distribute them. So now what I got to do is I got to try to center this as best I can and try to plop this in there as center as we possibly can. So we'll see what we can do. It may overflow a little bit, we'll see. There we go. Now I just gotta try to even these out as best I can. So now we basically just let it sit here and we wait. And hopefully these things dry out okay and it's not too far off. May not be perfect, but it'll be close. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover the whole thing in flex seal. I don't know if this stuff works, but we're gonna try. So all I'm gonna do is take some sandpaper and rough these things up a bit, and then we'll apply the flex seal. Here we go. Oh man, look at that. That is some nasty looking stuff. Oh man, I just got some on the camera. I'm gonna stir that up real quick, and then uh, we'll get to laying it out. All right, whatever. I'm just gonna use some old chunk of tile. Probably not the best thing. Oh, this stuff's pretty thick. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh. I don't know how much I'm gonna need. That might have been too much. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just laying it out on this. This technique of using the buckets with this is actually really helpful. Oh, man, this is kind of nasty. Oh. Jesus, look at that. This stuff is really thick, and it seems to be getting everywhere. It's actually working really well. Surprised. This stuff is messy. Definitely wear gloves doing this. Holy cow. That should be a good coverage. I'm just gonna fix anything I might have messed up. 
by touching it smooth it out a little bit and then we should be good so don't do this without gloves because otherwise you'll end up with hands like this so I'm pretty impressed with how this thing applied it's nice and thick it gets into all the little pores and everything of the concrete so hopefully this will protect them and keep them nice and safe but I gotta wait about 24 to 48 hours for this thing to harden up and then we'll put it to the test so I'll see you then so if you do happen to get this stuff on your hand I'm gonna show you a trick to get rid of it it's a little Clorox wipe because if you try running water remember this is made out of rubber it's not gonna work but this takes it right off I mean it's just look comes right up because that stuff otherwise you try using soap or anything else it's not going to come off because it's rubber and water just wants to run right off ask me how I know so these things seem to work really well for arm movements I mean they're not too heavy but heavy enough I mean, now I can finally do like an alternating curl. I miss doing these things. That's kind of hard to do without a dumbbell, especially in both arms. But these things work really well for doing like side raises or like front raises and shoulder workouts and stuff like that. So, you know, when it comes to the weight, these are, you know, anywhere from light to moderate, depending on what you're used to. I'd say these things work pretty damn good for lighter weight movements, you know? It's definitely too light for doing presses but they feel great for doing flies. If you don't have a kettlebell, these things could work as a temporary thing, you know? I mean, you could do a lot of these snatch and press type deals. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do with them, whether or not they weigh 100 pounds. So here's the deal. If this isn't heavy enough for you, let me show you what I did to make a heavier one. So I present to you, this is the heavier version. And all I did to make this was I used a mold from a vinegar jug. Literally just took the jug, chopped it, and then filled it with concrete. So you can literally make the mold out of anything that you want. If you want a heavier weight, you just need a bigger mold and more concrete. But I have to say that these things work really good in all kinds of situations, even if it's an overhead press or a row or anything like that. It's just a matter of finding one that's heavy enough for you. That's really the important thing. Because not everything is a one-size-fits-all solution. So anyway, guys, this is how I made my DIY dumbbells. These things turned out really, really good. I'm really impressed with how... I mean, look at these things. Tell me that this does not look like an actual dumbbell. I mean, come on. This is, this is pretty sick. And the Flex Seal stuff, that stuff works really, really well. So if you guys enjoyed this video, which I really hope that you did, be sure to hit that like button on your way out, as well as subscribe. Because, you know, if you don't subscribe, you're not going to know when we come out with more stuff, whether it's car-related or gym-related or any of that stuff. So... Be sure to do that, and I'll be sure to catch you in the next one. But just remember to keep it nice and easy, okay? I'll see you later.